Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Craig Burrell, and joining us today from the Royal Australian Navy is Commodore Scott Lockie. We warmly welcome the family of Private Llewellyn Morgan Jones, whose story will be told shortly. One member of the family will be, will be this evening's piper playing the lament during the ceremony. We are honoured to acknowledge Major General Clarence Chin, US Army Pacific Regional Leaders Development Course, United States of America and the accompanying delegation. We would also like to welcome members of the Australian First Armoured Regiment Association. We welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving and the families that support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria and RSL Queensland who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony across Australia. During the ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the pool of reflection by family, visitors and students on behalf of 121 and 12 Army Cadet units from Brisbane. Please stand and join in singing the National Anthem. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's first World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this National Memorial and Museum came to him at Pozieres, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn their loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the hearts of the land they loved. And here we guard the record that they themselves made. Tonight, we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and operations for more than a century. But first, we present the lament, Flowers of the Forest. Reeds or floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today we remember and pay tribute to Private Llewellyn Morgan Jones. Llewellyn Jones was the son of William and Rachel Jones. While the two were both born in South Wales, they met and married in Queensland after migrating to Australia in their 20s. Llewellyn was the fourth of their five children. When Llewellyn was seven years old, his father moved to America to look for work with the family to follow. However, this never happened, and although the family remained in contact, Llewellyn did not see his father again. His elder brother, William, became the head of the family, and Lou attended the Petri Terrace Boys School and later Milton State School. He became a carter for the Automatic Bakeries Company in Brisbane. In 1914, Llewellyn's mother was admitted to an institution after several months of illness. Llewellyn Jones enlisted in the Australian Imperial Force in June 1915. He underwent a period of training in Australia before being sent to Egypt with the 25th Battalion. He continued training there and was transferred to the 9th Battalion in February 1916. Private Jones arrived in France to fight on the Western Front in April 1916. He spent a few days in hospital with the flu, but otherwise continued training in preparation for the 9th Battalion's first operation on the Western Front. This came on the 23rd of July 1916 when the 9th Battalion participated in an operation that successfully captured the French village of Poissier. Less than a month later, the 9th Battalion was back on the front line to the north of Pozier. There it came under regular heavy artillery bombardment. On the 21st of August, the 10th, 11th and 12th Battalions attacked towards Mouquet Farm, with the 9th Battalion holding the left flank of the line. As the attack went ahead, platoons of the 9th Battalion were called forward in support of the main operation. In the confusion of battle, the 9th Battalion suffered more than 150 casualties in the small force that participated in the operation and the men in the lines under the artillery bombardment. Private Llewellyn Jones did not return on the 21st of August and was reported to have been killed in action. The family heard very little about the manner of his death. Even in 1920, Llewellyn's older brother William wrote to the base records saying, up to the present, I have not had any further information from as to how or where he was killed. I might add that his disc and personal belongings have been returned to me, and in consequence, I think some record of his death should be with you. However, there is no evidence that the, of the exact manner of Llewellyn Jones's death was ever determined. His body was lost in the confusion and heavy artillery fire at Mouquet Farm and never recovered. He was 21 years old. His name is listed on the Roll of Honour on my right, among the 62,000 Australians who died while serving in the First World War. His photograph is displayed today beside the Pool of Reflection. This is but one of many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Private Llewellyn Morgan Jones, who gave his life for us for our freedoms and in the hope of a better world. Please stand for the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.
lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many men lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub at Gallipoli, with his poor, tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain, has thought in his last moments, well, well, it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the last post ceremony. Thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial and good evening.